Welcome to Purpose. I'm your host, Corey Clark. I'm just a normal girl who decided to go for it. I created a thriving business from the ground up without sacrificing my sanity, and I believe that you can do the same. You were created on purpose, for a purpose, and I fully believe you can turn that purpose into profit. Each week, I'm going to bring you practical advice to help you live your life and grow your business on purpose. Hey guys, thanks so much for tuning in to Purpose. I am your host, Corey Clark, and I am so thankful that you are here listening to me today. So I just want to thank you guys. Some of you have been on this journey with me since my business started, and that is just amazing. I love connecting with you guys. I love getting to know you, and I appreciate all of you so much. So thank you for joining me on this new journey of this podcast. And like I've said in the previous ones, I'm just kind of learning as I go and it's fun and exciting and sometimes frustrating. For instance, I just recorded this episode and I got frustrated and was like, I think I should do it over, but no, Corey, like don't be a perfectionist, just do it. Well, Ryan came in to help me edit it and The first half of the recording was not there. I have no clue what I did, so I am not allowed to push any more buttons on this, and I have to re-record it. So I took that as a sign that God was like, it's okay, you can have a do-over on this one. So here we go, episode four. And if you guys are enjoying the show, I would love if you left me a review on iTunes. And I'm doing a giveaway for the first week So if you leave a review on iTunes and screenshot it and then share it in your Instagram stories and tag me so that I can see it, you'll be entered to win a $50 gift card to Amazon and a $50 gift card to my shop. So, okay, enough about that. Today, I wanted to share with you guys five simple steps to goal setting. Now, I use these same steps for my personal life and my business life, and I've always been a huge fan of setting goals and putting things in my planner, obviously, but I was never as serious about it as I had to be once our business took off. So in our first year, our business grew to multiple six figures, and I was like, what in the world I don't know how to set sales goals. I don't know how to figure out, you know, how much product to order. It was just like crazy town. So I had to get serious really quick about goal setting. So this is what we do at the beginning of each year. I sit down and do this with Ryan even before he was um, working with me full time. This is what we would do. And Um, It's seriously my favorite thing to do. So I'm going to put in the show notes like links to all the products we use and share my whole process there for you so that you can go back and do it. Um, Or if you want to do it right now, you could. You could just pull out a piece of paper and start going through this process and then just pause it while you work. Um, Anyways, this is kind of our getting started process. And I do go deeper when I'm setting like our revenue goals and our launch goals and that kind of stuff. But these are the basics to get us going. So the first thing we do is we do a massive brain dump. I buy those huge like post-it sticky notes that are like poster size. We have an easel in the office and we just do a huge brain dump. And we put everything in there. We put our vacations in there. We put our health goals in there. We put our financial goals in there. We put all the ideas we have, things, anything that we're hoping to try or achieve, any place we want to go, whatever it is, you name it, sky's the limit, it goes on that brain dump. And since Ryan and I and our business and our family, everything is so intertwined. We really just like sit down and bust it all out at once. So if that's not the case for you, you can totally just follow this plan for your business or you can totally follow this plan just for your personal life. It's so important to set goals because before you know it, it is going to be December 31st, 2019 and you're gonna be like, shoot, why didn't I do that this year? I really wanted to. 
So I think goal setting is extremely important no matter where you are in life. Okay, so back to the brain dump. Every single thing goes on there doesn't matter what it is and we put big crazy dreams on there too like we'll put our huge hairy scary revenue goal and we'll put crazy places that we want to go visit because if we can make it work we're going to okay once we have our brain dump down step number two is we break it down by month so I'll take another one of those big poster sticky notes and seriously you guys by the end of our planning session I have like 10 of those plastered on the walls. So I'll take a clean one and I will make a grid with 12 squares in it for each month. And I'll write the title of the month at the top of each square. And then I take from our brain dump and I start filling in the months like where each thing is possibly going to go. So remember, this isn't like on our calendar yet. This isn't in our planner. This is really just getting a bird's eye view of what the year could possibly look like. So if I know we're going to be taking a family vacation in June, I put that in June. And you guys could even like write these things on sticky notes. That way you can move them around. But some of our major things, I know what month they're going to happen in. So I stick those in first. And if we have like a new product we're wanting to launch, then I can look at that and see like, oh my gosh, okay, so May and June are super crazy busy for us. So I know I am not going to want to launch a new product in May and June. And that's where we start really just filling in the gaps of the year and figuring out where we're going to put each big thing, no matter what it is. So for my business, I don't do any, like I don't do more than one big launch in a month. So I know for sure when it's planner launch, like that is full on, that's where my focus is. Or when I'm opening my VIP lounge, that's where my focus is. And that just really helps us to like even out our year, spread out our revenue goals, you know, just making sure that we're not too heavy on one area in one month at a time. Once those things are spread out on all those months, and I have a good idea of when we're going to actually be doing things, then I take it to my wall calendar. So we have this huge wall calendar. It's like three feet high by five feet wide. And it's actually like a digital download in the shop, and you can have it printed at a local blueprint shop for super cheap. Anyways, we made this last year, and it was a game changer. So I take those monthly launches and vacations and projects and all that kind of stuff and I start putting them on our wall calendar now if it's something that I'm not quite sure exactly the date but I'm pretty sure like hey I'm pretty sure this is going to happen in March then I just write it on a sticky note and put it in March but I put you know the kids birthdays I put any vacations that we know we're going to go on, something that's already booked. If there's a conference that I know I'm going to be at, that goes on there. My mastermind retreat days go on there. Anything that I already know is set in stone gets put on that calendar like immediately so that we don't end up over committing to anything. Now that I have a good idea of what our year is going to look like, I take a look at that brain dump again and all those launches and all of those things that need to be done and I make to-do lists. Now I do this on a big poster board again and I break the list down into like I have a family list or you know things we want to do around the house and I have a list that's just for my Shopify store and I have a list for my courses and I have a list for my membership I just make like as many to-do lists as I need to and it's just like another brain dump. All the things that I need to do in that category. If I need to update my website, that goes on there. If I want to rebrand something, that goes on there. And the nice thing is now I have a team to start delegating that stuff to. But I didn't used to. It used to be me. And so this was how I had to process it. I just had to get it all out of my head so that I wasn't constantly being like, oh my gosh, I forgot I need to do that. I just get everything out there on those to-do lists. And then step four is I actually take those things, those to-do lists, and I put them with their goals 
in my goal planner. So I have a business and goal planner and I'll go through and I will schedule out our launches and I'll take, there's project sheets in there and I'll take each project sheet is assigned to one like major goal. So if one of my goals is to add like 50,000 subscribers to my email list by a certain date, I give everything a due date, then I break that down on that project sheet. What am I going to do to do this? How am I going to achieve this? What are the little steps that need to happen? You know, do I need to create a new opt-in page? Do I need to create a new freebie? Do I need new images? Do I need to come up with a new email sequence? Any little thing goes on those project sheets. And this just helps me get more organized and break things down into bite-sized chunks instead of looking at my one goal and freaking out and going, how in the world am I going to meet that revenue goal? I can break it down into projects. Every project has a section for like how much time I need to spend on it. So if it's writing a blog post, then I know, okay, I need a couple hours to write that. Or if it's new imagery, okay, I know I just need like 20 minutes to get a couple new images up. So I just, I literally break things down by task in those project sheets. And then the last step, step number five, is I schedule it. I pull out my planner and I actually schedule the time to start chipping away at these goals and projects. So I am a busy person. My schedule is very full, but it's very intentional as well. I don't fill it with a lot of busy work like I used to. I don't say yes to everything like I used to, but I still have a very full schedule. I homeschool my kids and they're older now, so they don't need a ton of help, but there are interruptions throughout the day. There are things that I have to help them with. And so there's a lot of times where I can't just dedicate a full day to work on a project. I have to be super intentional with my time when I'm planning my day And I will try to find like a one to two hour chunk where I can just focus on one of those projects. And then if I have other chunks of time, like a half hour here or 20 minutes there, I will use those to chip away at some of the shorter tasks. Like I said, on those project sheets, I have a section where it tells me how much time I think something's going to take. If you're not sure how long things take you, this is just like a side note. Spend like a week tracking what you do. Write down everything you do and how long it takes you. And maybe just set your timer to go off every 15 minutes or every hour and write down what all you did. The other thing is when you do that, it actually like motivates you to get more done because after the first couple of times your timer goes off, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm wasting too much time. I got to try and beat this timer. So it actually does two things. It helps you know where you're spending your time and it helps you use your time more wisely while you're going through that testing process. Anyways, so if I have like a half hour in the afternoon, I will look at my project, project sheet and find something that I know will take a half hour or less and I'll just bust it out. And that's honestly how I have to operate my days in this season that I'm in. If you don't have kids at home and um, or you have like a full day you can spend on something, that is amazing. I know there are a lot of entrepreneurs that will just block their days and like on Mondays is all of their interviews and then on Tuesdays they're working on their project and on Wednesdays, you know, is their meetings. Well, I can't do that. Not at this point in time. Maybe in another season I can. But for right now, what I can do is look at my day And be intentional about finding some chunks of time to just focus on one of those projects and get it done before it becomes urgent. Because when something becomes urgent, then it actually becomes sloppy. So those are the five things that I do to get started on our goal setting for the year. So step one was brain dump. Step two was break it down by month. Step three was put together like to-do lists. Step four is break it into projects and goals. And then step five is to schedule it. So those are like the basics and that kind of gets us set up for the year. And then I actually have a whole second process to really dive deep into our 
business goals, our revenue goals, our launch plans, our vision, our focus, all of that kind of stuff. And if that's something that you're interested in, I actually have that training that I just did in our VIP lounge in January. So I have a membership site and I have these amazing ladies in there and every month we do training and coaching and live Q&As and so in January we did our business goal setting for the year. So if you want access to that, the doors to the VIP lounge are open right now and they're only open for like a week and then I'm closing the doors for the rest of the year. So this is your last chance to get in for 2019 and you can go to coreyclark.com slash VIP to get more info on that. But on top of that, I will have all of this info that I just shared with you today at coreyclark.com slash four. So I'll have my show notes in there. I'll have links to my favorite products that we use. And I'll have my step-by-step process of how we get started in these main five steps for our goal setting for the year. Thanks so much for listening, you guys. I would love if you would screenshot this episode and share it on Instagram. Tag me. Let me know what you're doing while you're listening. Are you working out? Are you doing dishes? Are you just sitting relaxing in your house? I like to listen to podcasts in the morning when I'm on my walk. So I would love to know what you are up to while you're listening. Thanks so much, guys. And I will see you in our next episode. 